In this video, I will show you how to connect to a PostgreSQL database using Entity Framework Core. Imagine you have been tasked with building a movie website. You have picked ASP.NET MVC as your web framework and PostgreSQL as your database. This tutorial will walk you through the steps you need to get the website connected to the database. Let's get into it. In the .NET ecosystem, the go-to tool you need to use to access a relational database is Entity Framework Core. Entity Framework Core can access many different databases thanks to plugins library called Database Providers. As long as there is a provider for a given database, you will be able to access it with Entity Framework Core. Of course, there is a provider for PostgreSQL. We will use it later. If you want to follow along, Make sure you have Visual Studio with the web development workload. You will also need an instance of PostgreSQL. To manage your database, you will need pgAdmin, which is installed at the same time as the database. Let's start by creating the website. In Visual Studio, create a new project, select the ASP.NET MVC template, then click on the next button. In the next dialog window, you can give a name to your project, then click on the Next button. In this dialog, you can select the .NET version. I'm using .NET 6. I don't need HTTPS, so I uncheck the checkbox Configure for HTTPS. Then click on the Create button to generate the project. To make sure the project was generated correctly, let's execute it. As you can see, we have a running website. To connect to your database, you will need a connection string. The file appsettings.json is a good place for that. Add a new key. Make sure it is name connection strings. Then add a key. In my case, I name it movies db. This key will allow retrieving the connection string from the code. In the value, you specify the connection string to your database. The minimum pieces of information are the server, the database, the port, the user ID, and the password. The user ID and the password were set during the installation of the server. The other parameters can be found in the properties of the database. Now that we have a web application, we are going to create a data access layer to interact with the database. Let's create a new project. This time, select the class library template. Give a name to your project. I name it moviesapp.data. Select the framework version, then create the project. Let's get rid of this class generated during the creation of the project. This project will be used by the web application. From the web app, add a project reference to the data project. We talked earlier about Entity Framework Core database providers. It's time to install the provider for PostgreSQL. Head to NuGet Package Manager UI and search for npgsql.entityframeworkcore.postgreSQL then install the NuGet package. Entity Framework Core allows to interact with the database using C-sharp classes that map to database tables. These classes are what we call a model. Our model will have two entities, a movie and an actor. Let's create them. Add a new class, name it movie. The ID property represent the identifier of a movie. Next, a movie needs a title. You can decorate a property with the require attribute. This tells Entity Frameworks that this property must have data. Next, add a year property which represents the year the movie was released. Next, add a summary property. Next, add a actors property, which stores a list of actors that play in the movie. This is a special property that establishes the relationship between the movie entity and the actor entity. This represents a one-to-many relationship. 
The property is decorated with max range attribute to tell Entity Framework that it can only have a maximum of three items. Next, let's complete the Actor class. It has two properties, the ID and the full name, and the latter is required. To complete the model, you need a data context. This object is responsible for querying the database. Add a new class. I name it movie data context. A uh, data context is simply a class that inherits from the DB context class. In order to perform operations on the database, the data context must expose the entities that map to the database tables as DB set properties. You will need a DB set property of movie and a DB set property of actor. As a good practice, we will delegate the creation of the data context to the ASP.NET dependency injection container. To allow that, you need to expose a public constructor with a DB context option parameter. This way we can pass configuration to the context. To complete the data context, we want to make sure that the columns of identifier increment themselves. For that, we are going to override the method on model creating, then call the method use serial columns on the model builder object. The data context is ready. So before using it, we are going to register it with the dependency injection container. Add to program.cs file, invoke the method add db context on the service property of the web application builder. The type is the movie data context created earlier. We configure the context to use the PostgreSQL provider. We read the connection string from the app settings.json file. The model is ready. At this point, there's still no database. We will create the database based on our model. So this approach is called code first. Entity Framework has a concept called migrations. In a nutshell, they allow to keep the model and the database in sync. To use migrations, you need to install a NuGet package called Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.Tools. This tool will allow to use migrations in Visual Studio. Now open the Package Manager console. Add the first migration using the command add migration. I named the migration initial database. I can execute the command. I get an error. There is a package that miss in the startup project. Okay, let's fix that. So the package we need to install is microsoft.entityframeworkcore.design. So let's try to create the migration again. This time it works. So as you can see, a class with the migration name has been created. It has all information about how to create the database based on the model. To apply the migration, you need to execute the command update database. Then go to pgadmin and refresh the database. You can see that we have a movies DB database. Now that we have a database, let's try to read the movies. In the web application, open the home controller. Remove the logger because we won't need it. Add a parameter movie data context to the constructor. This way, an instance of the data context will be injected at the runtime. When the home page is displayed, the index method is executed first, which makes it a good candidate to load movies. The DB set property movies will query all the movies. You need the extension method include to tell entity framework to load related data. In this case, actors data. Once we have a list of movies, we can pass it to the view so it can be displayed. While this query is correct, it's not a good idea to return the entities to the view because the exposed properties lack ID, which are not used and can be sensitive. Also, you may need to format some data before showing them. A good practice is to use a view model. Create a folder named view models, then add a new class named movie view model. 
this class will encapsulate data needed for the view. Add a title property, a year property, a summary property, and finally a actors property. Let's go back to the controller and update the query. Instead of returning a list of movie entities, you want to make a link projection and return a list of movie view model. While projecting values, we can even transform the list of actors into a simple string. Now let's write code that displays the movies. First, declare the at model directive to specify the type of the model passed to the view. In our case, it's an enumerable of movie view models. Then we iterate through the list of movies passed as the model to display the various property of a movie. Let's run the application. There is nothing on the screen. This is normal because the database is empty. Let's see how we can populate the database with some initial data. The simplest way is to insert data using the data context before the application logic begins execution. Create a new class, name it data seeder. The class must be static. Add a method named seed. Add a parameter that indicates that this is an extension method that extends the iOS interface. The goal here is to resolve the data context register with the dependency injection container. Host.services.createScope will create a new service scope that can be used to resolve scoped services. Using the scope service, we can invoke the method getRequireService on the service provider class to resolve a type. We want it to resolve the movie data context. At this point, we have the data context. We make sure the database is created. Then we pass the data context to a method that will use it to insert data. I name the method addMovies. In the method addMovies, first check if there is a movie in the database. If it is the case, there's nothing to do. Otherwise, create a new movie and add it to the data context. I add two more movies. It's important to invoke the method save changes on the data context to propagate changes to the database in the program.cs. Before this line app.run, invoke the seed extension method to add initial data if necessary. Let's run the application. You can see that we hit the breakpoint in the method add movies because the movie table is empty. Let's continue. Voila. We have our movies on the screen. Let's check into the database. If I display the movie table content, you can see the three movies created during the data seeding. This tutorial ends here. I hope you enjoy it. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.